The fact that Allah is the moon god explains why the primary symbol of Islam is the crescent moon. It is also why Muslims fast during the month which begins and ends with the appearance of the crescent moon in the sky. What about the star that so often accompanies it? This is an adaptation of the old symbol for the sexual joining of the male and female deity. These are Egyptian and Babylonian examples. Islam has adopted other important features and rites that betray its pagan roots. Mecca, the holy city of Islam, was also the centre for pagan religions of pre-Islamic Arabia, for example. At the centre of the pagan worship in Mecca was the square stone temple called the Kaaba. Following the widespread belief in the powers of magic stones, the famous black stone was embedded in the wall of the Kaaba. Such black stones were found in other places in the pagan Middle East and were representative of Saturn. The pagans of pre-Islamic Arabia believed that they needed to bow and pray towards Mecca at set times in the day. Furthermore, they believed that one should make a pilgrimage to worship at the Kaaba at least once in one's lifetime, to process round the Kaaba seven times and to kiss the black stone. All these rites were continued in Islam. The Quraysh tribe saw to it that all manner of different religions were allowed in the Kaaba, so as to extend the influence of Mecca as a centre for many religions. There were about 360 different idols in the Kaaba in addition to an idol of Allah. Today we find the black cube which originally represented Saturn all over the world. Fans of the Transformers movies will know that it portrays the cube as the source of all life. In that movie, both Decepticon and Autobot, good and evil, comes from this one force. The same philosophical idea is found in many other movies like Star Wars, Harry Potter and Wizard of Oz. A key trait of occultism is the idea that behind both the sun and moon, light male and dark female is one source. The force itself is neutral, but can be used for good or evil. Incidentally, you'll also notice a lot of pyramids and sun symbols in the second movie in particular. The third installment, which is called The Dark of the Moon, is out in the summer of 2011, so keep an eye out for symbolism and hidden messages if you watch it. Muhammad removed the idols from the Kaaba, but nobody knows, however, what's left inside. No one really knows what they're worshipping towards when they face it. Questions about this would be sacrilege for a Muslim to ask, since Islam, like Catholicism, does not encourage freedom of inquiry or conscience. Just before we move on from this short exploration of Islam, I want to make it clear that when this series is titled Know Your Enemy, it does not refer to any human being or group of human beings. Christians are to have no human enemies and are commanded by Jesus to love even those who hate us. The enemy referred to in the title is a spiritual one. As Ephesians 6.12 says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Referring back to part two of the study, our fight is against the king of Tyre, not the princes of Tyre. We are to love Muslims and Catholics and anyone else for that matter, but wage spiritual war against Satan and his hordes who would seek to enslave and destroy humanity.